Hi, everyone. This is Mark. And I'm Mike. And I'm Jeff. And you're listening to What Do We Know? Whenever I answer the phone, I'm like, hello. What pissed you off? It's a great argument to have. I love my mom, but I think she's half crazy for doing that. How dare you? Do you work with your girlfriend, Mark? Or your wife? I keep them separated. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I call people. They don't answer the phone. I'm like, f***ing Wrong number, click. Well, he's not that smart. And sometimes he sounds like he knows what he's doing. (laughs) Go. Therefore, you're an ass, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. I still need my time. Man, I'm such an ass for sure. Only the best. So we suck. It's just finding our audience. Yeah. No, we suck. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) You guys do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. Just be like Facebook. Facebook lost tons of money when it first started. It was more about getting people on Facebook or right. people to listen. So should we make our <clears throat> podcast exclusive to make people want it more? And then Only to call it up in the entire world. Like yes. that LO uh, that's going on Well, that's, right how, now. that's how Facebook Hello, started. Yeah. It was based on exclusivity and... That's universities what got them above. Well, it was specifically only like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and then they were adding other colleges as they went out and visited the colleges and saw who would do. So it was all oh, it's exclusive. Everybody wanted in, and then they just opened it up to everybody. And well, that and also the alternative really sucked. So that helped. MySpace. Yeah, I mean, Friendster. I. I I, I don't know if you remember how annoying MySpace was, because basically when you opened the page, it started bla- blaring music on you, and then when you go to another page, it, the music cuts out, and then it's a new song, and then you go back, and then it restarts the song. It was really annoying. I do know that I was never alone with MySpace, though. Tom was always there for me. <laughs> he was my bro. <laughs> I, I always sort of wondered, like, why didn't he pick a better profile pic? I thought it was kind of funny. Looked, like, it just oh, became he looked the so staple happy. of what MySpace was, was Tom. <laughs> like, he was so happy. Tom was so happy all the time. He really enjoyed his time on MySpace. You could tell. But then the, one of the problems with that is didn't they start doing um, second-degree friendships to show, like, who your friends are friends with that are also friends with your friends to kind of show like, you know, six degrees of separation. Type uh, deal. Uh, but it was trying to do it with your friends list so that you could might be able to meet other people that were similar to you. If like my friends are all friends with this person and right. this person, you know, is friends with these other people that are like interrelated in some way. But the problem is Tom being everybody's friend screwed up the whole like algorithm because it was uh, everybody was second degree to each other because Tom was because of Tom. And you couldn't drop Tom as a friend, I don't think. He was he was a guy, he wouldn't let you defriend him. He was that good. He was like, you know, I know you're mad at me right now, but we're going to get through this. We're going to work it out. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. Okay. Did work right, out. We won't talk for a while or ever. But... Oh, oh, Mark, I yeah. beg to differ. It did work out because we're still talking about Tom, and it's 2014. It is true. He brings up a valid point. I mean, I want. Does out. Tom have a Facebook page? Oh, didn't they? Didn't he sell MySpace though? For a lot less what was his time? last name? I don't even know. I his don't last even name. know. I'm gonna Tom just look MySpace. Up. Tom MySpace. Let's see, <laughs> Tom MySpace. Oh, there's a guy with. Wait, what? No, that's just somebody with middle fingers sticking in MySpace. Some Tom still on MySpace. Oh, what a sad oh, dude. I, is Tom allowed to have a MySpace page or a Facebook page? I mean, yeah, I'm sure. Probably. That'd be awesome. I would that would be like the ultimate selling point for Facebook. Is, look, <laughs> is... Tom came over. Because <laughs> MySpace... we have Tom now. So MySpace <laughs> now. For so for those who don't know, MySpace was the predecessor of Facebook, which was you know, a, a succeeder of, or successor of Friendster and like, well, the whole social media chain, but MySpace now has changed over to some like music website. Yeah. It's like for band promotion. Oh, it did? I, I, it looks, I, yeah, really, that was actually a while ago. Well, it looks really fancy. It like you go to certain like pages on MySpace and you're like, man, this is set up really well. It's got music. It's got these cool pictures. 
but I've never, ever, ever seen somebody advertise a band on there. There's lots of bands on there, but I've never had a band be like, come to our MySpace page. I've never seen that before. Because then mm-hmm. everyone would know they're not with it. <laughs> you're on MySpace. You're not. Although, join us on AOL and... <laughs> well, Sean, Sean, King, Sean Kingston? Yeah. If I, wasn't he like one of the original people that got popular from MySpace? He got well known because of the music that he did on MySpace. And they like he got picked up by a record label. So, I mean... I mean I'm, let me throw this out there. Could it just be that the three of us are now old and not plugged into like the hip scene? I, yeah, it's very possible. I guess our listeners could tell us if we uh, have right. if MySpace is actually something that. I mean, how funny would that be if you started hearing people talk about MySpace again? Though, would you be like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, it, it's if so anybody, retro. <laughs> if any of our listeners knows more about this than us, which is probably everybody, but wdwkpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know because I we're curious about this for sure. If they did turn into a music website, like that's interesting because I'm with you, Jeff. Like I've never heard anybody try to plug their band on here, but I only listen to the radio. So, you know, I mean, to find new music, like I'm kind of limited I, now on how I even find new music. I'm pretty sure they, uh, MySpace did, did the music switch over when after they sold MySpace, Tom sold MySpace. And then I think this was like four or five years ago. Oh, so I think, I, I think it might've been a long, I, I remember hearing that MySpace was doing this, but I just recently, and I mean, some point in the last year happened to go to something. Actually, you know what it was? I was looking for, the we were talking <laughs> we were talking about recommendation letters with somebody they asked me to write him a recommendation letter and i was joking around with them about the letter that i wrote for you mark i don't know right. if you recall it was, yeah, it was a mock good. recommendation letter like it was just going off the wall about like how he's asian so he's like jackie chan and therefore help people us americans don't know the difference like asian people all look alike so therefore they'll think there's a celebrity working for them you know it was it was ridiculous it was very racist like in a funny way and i remember you had put it up on your myspace it's not page. funny to me <laughs> sorry you just don't understand humor um so <laughs> i remember you had put it up on your myspace page way back in the day so i literally looked up your name in myspace and i brought you, your page still exists as well as our yeah, unit 32 like- video which is crazy um yeah. it's still on there somewhere because I watched it after I looked at the letter. But I realized that's when I came across MySpace to realize it was the whole music scene. And it was, like, really hmm. well done. And then I was like, but if it's so well done, why, why is nobody, like, it just doesn't exist, though. It's like, people don't talk about it. Stay tuned, everybody. Still more of the show to come. But don't forget, you can email us, wdwkpodcast at gmail.com, or visit us at our website, wdwkpodcast.com. So what do you think about immersive movie theaters? Do you have any of those out there in Japan? Um, actually, I haven't been in movie theaters in Japan because they're really expensive. But Because uh... oh, I've been hearing lately, I don't know if there's any in the United States yet, but... Um, I know that they're in all these other, uh, a bunch of other countries that they, y- you ever been to, let's say like Disney oh. world or MGM studios. Yeah. And basically oh. they have a movie specifically that plays and you sit in a chair and it's got speakers right next to you and things right. that like splash water on the back of your neck at certain scenes, like to make you feel like there's a dragon breathing down the back of your neck. Um, uh, right. I've, I've, wouldn't that be fire? Wouldn't that be fire? I don't know. Too many dragons that spit water. But I don't think it's. I don't think they wanted to burn all their guests' necks yeah. and give them that much of the. You experience. know, if if you want to really get realistic, you're gonna have to start singeing some hairs on the backs of people's necks. Very that's all. good point. That's all I'm saying. I think they're both right, like forty, 40 theaters. On. Well, I was just gonna say that um, they take today's movies. Today's movies, um, like new movies, and they make. Whoa, my microphone's falling down. <laughs> Your audio's <laughs> something. Something bad just happened. <laughs> we lost Jeff. We lost a Jeff. dragon 
breathes fire on Jeff's microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Having your mic plugged in does make for better conversation. You know what? Hello. I like better all, all Hello? so much better. Hello. Hello. Oh, always back. Am I back? Yeah, Yay. that's better. Yeah, back. Oh yeah, I uh, I just kicked my microphone cord, but you sounded so much better like ten seconds ago. <laughs> Thanks. I was gonna hear you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> But I mean, these immersive movie theaters—they they take the movies and they're, the chairs are all on like mechanical stuff too, so it right. tilts left and right. Like take the Indiana Jones like minecart scene, and it would make you go like woo woo, you know, as it's going through, and it does all those different effects. And I heard that they are getting really popular in other parts of the world. I wish we had some here. How cool would that be? I haven't gone to the movie theater in years. Because, as you said, it's it's like twelve bucks for a movie ticket or something like well, that. Well, how much would a four D theater cost? Like the stuff but that it, you want. But it's giving me something that I couldn't get at home. I will. I, I, I don't know. Also, I've never been to an IMAX theater. Never been to an IMAX. Um, I don't know. Are they are they any good? I would never spend the extra money on going to the IMAX version of a movie because well, I didn't quite understand. Did you see a three D movie in IMAX? No, like three D movies. I've seen a 3D Dream. movie before. The one that you need glasses for. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've been to IMAX theaters. Um, are, are you they, know... Are they anything even special? I, uh, from what I understand, isn't it just like the screen wraps around a little bit? Kind of gives you more of a peripheral? It's like a bigger screen TV. Well, no, not just that. But like if you get a... resolution. Um, yeah, well, in... They're, they have 3D IMAX now, too. Right. So when you're talking about a giant screen, which basically wraps around your whole head, I mean, it basically... So I, I saw a couple movies, and one of which was Avatar. Mm. Um, and if you guys know much about that movie when it came out, like, you know, it's totally kind of a blowhardy sort of movie, but... It's, for, it's Fern Gully. They, that's not a cartoon, but yeah. Right. Well, but they 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 wrote this movie like, and and these facts are going to be sketchy because I can't remember now because it's been you know I don't know how many years since I saw that movie in the theater, but they let it sit kind of on the shelf for like ten or twelve years or something like that because the technology wasn't where they wanted it to be. Um, well, so so when I saw this thing in three D IMAX or whatever. It was, it was very cool. Like you, you felt like you were kind of in this movie, but you still are very aware that it's sort of a computer generated sort of, right? You know, virtual reality sort of situation. So it's not you. You know, it's not even close to you really. <laughs> feel like you're in this situation no you feel like you're wrapped in this kind of digital 3d sort of world which is sort of a neat feeling but is it worth the you know 35 dollars i probably paid for my wife and i plus popcorn and a drink you know you know probably not um, but it's neat i guess you were saying that they didn't have the technology back then but actually i, I think they did uh i don't remember if you guys might not remember the Final Fantasy movie that came out. That that was the yeah, the I graphics were really great. Now the cost to make that movie was probably way too high for the actual profit they made. But I don't know. I would say they had the technology. They just well, I, I'm strictly going by what I remember hearing about that movie when it came out. Was that he actually wrote it? I don't know, ten or twelve years ago or something. And I, you know, please everybody fact check me and. You know, if you want to email us and tell me I'm wrong, that's fine. But yeah, it was something along the lines of um, it was 10 or 12 years written and the technology wasn't where he wanted it to be. And so he put it on the shelf and then it just came out when he thought he could have a quality product out of what he wrote. So, so but you're speaking still of just an IMAX movie in 3D. Right. So did you have to wear glasses? Yes. So, I mean, they haven't come to 3D technology yet that doesn't involve glasses, which is unfortunate. But can you right, imagine right, what, right. what if you were in that 
if you had paid to go see that movie and you were in a chair, like take those flying scenes when he's flying on the back of that bird or whatever animal that was where he yeah. makes love to his hair or whatever. Or whatever. Um, yeah. But he, can you imagine if you were in something that immersed you in like you had a breeze that was like blowing by you as he was going really fast to make you simulate that you were you know actually moving somewhere and the whole chair was right. like moving around how much cooler of an experience would that have been it would have been cool and like if i could wrap my hair up in an animal and feel like i bonded with it that'd be oh awesome. <laughs> that's your fetish is that's sick. no <laughs> animals were hurt in the but... making of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> um, but so if they're doing this for movies in other countries, I would assume that each individual theater isn't writing their own scripts. So the scripts and how it all works has to exist somewhere. So in theory, yeah. you buy a plot, buy an old movie theater that shut down, install one theater that has 30 of these seats in it or whatever, and buy the programming from other places who have already done this programming in there huh. for different movies, I would think well, that'd be huge. Is yeah, probably probably the only place who's done this is Disney. Like I don't really know Universal another studios place. do it also. But no, I mean Isn't that owned by Disney? I don't think so. They're two different movie studios. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up here immersive movie theaters. Because they there is consumer ones now. No. I but anyways the the point being I think to buy like the copyright or patent on the technology to do that is probably like going to cost a fortune. I don't know. I've been to enough immersive movies where after a while, it's not worth the five to ten dollars extra that you would pay for a movie. Right. And the same thing comes with the IMAX, where I'm after let's say ten, fifteen minutes into the movie, you totally forget that you're watching an IMAX movie. So it could be a five. A uh, 15 inch screen TV on your laptop or an IMAX theater, after you get into the movie, it doesn't really matter about uh, on screen size. It looks pretty much the same. Right. I, no, I totally agree with you. There's not too many movies I ever. Well, I've only been to two IMAX movies in my life, and I don't think I feel like I ever need to go to one again um, right. because I know what they are. And until they radically advance the technology, like I just, well, it's not worth the money to me. Here's the thing with uh, uh, 3D movies. Why can't they just make it so it's 3D without glasses? And I, I, I want to say that it's very possible because, yeah, uh, do you remember like uh, uh, a couple of years ago they made it, they had a um, an award show or something where they had Tupac come back, where it was all right, holographic. With a holographic image, yeah. yeah. They could do that with movies now. I mean, you they have think, they have think. the technology. Well, and and frankly, like I don't know when the last time you guys have gone through, you know, like a a big electronics store, but the TV technology is getting so incredible. Um, you know, it, it's like to me, do I really need three D holographic images going around my living room? I don't, yes. I don't know, but. Um, with the, basically, okay, the short of it, long and short of it is that the last time I was in a Best Buy, which for those of you who don't know, that's kind of a big box electronic store in America. Um, the, they have these big displays with like top of the line TVs. Like the 4K um, HD what's TVs. That? Like the 4K HD TVs. Yeah, I, I assume that's probably what they were, and they were like the angled screens kind of thing, you know. Um, they were incredible. They were absolutely incredible to look at. And, and you know, I know part of that is they're um, running, you know, Blu-rays that are specifically made to accent the, you know, top-of-the-line uh, hardware capabilities of these machines. But... Um, you know, it's like to wear those glasses. I never really saw um, a benefit to that, which is why I don't have a 3D TV. I think that's kind of a pain in the butt. And I think this new technology that's coming out is just so absolutely crystal clear that, you know, you'd have a hard time selling me on 
buying a TV that I I have to wear these 3D glasses to to really get the full effect of. So basically, you're saying that newer TVs with 3D technology doesn't float your boat because you have to wear something on your face. Yeah, I mean that's well, and it's part of like a value sort of based system where if I could wear something on my face and the image was, you know, 150 times better than what I could get off just like a normal TV, then yeah, I'm absolutely going to do it. However, you know, I got a pretty cool TV now and I don't have to wear something on my face. So the value to me of wearing these glasses and spending the extra money for the TV when I'm not totally convinced that, this whole 3D technology is ever going to become like a standardized unit. So I bought, is kind of up in the air to me. I bought Google Cardboard recently. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you know what that is. I don't know what that is. It, it's the, it's a cardboard box essentially. It looks like a, one of those old viewfinders when you were a kid. You're like, oh look, I'm on vacation. Click click. <laughs> like I'm at the Grand Canyon. Okay. Click click. Um, you pretty much make this thing and you put your smartphone into it and it's supposed to turn your smartphone into a 3D screen with certain applications. <laughs> so I bought some Google Cardboard because they were like $3. How's that work? Um, I don't know because I can't get it to work right. So. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I have the, wrong, well, the well. wrong programs or what, but I put my phone in there and I looked and I'm like, now I see my phone, like half and half of my phone, but it's right. not, it didn't put the images together in any way. Uh, I just don't think I have the right application installed but conceptually it's it's a cool yeah, concept. Sure. <laughs> so uh all 3d really does is gives two different images on your eyes and they're like right shifted left or right to make it more 3d or whatever right. um so that's how google cardboard is supposed to work yeah, I mean, I understand the concept of it, and that's why, like, the, the glasses that came out for the, the new technology, like, the old technology was the whole red and blue thing, so that's why they have the red and blue shades, is because right, it right. was a filter that filtered out, you. this one eye is not going to see this part of the image, this one eye is not going to see the other, so when it combines them, it looks three-dimensional, granted, in shady colors. But right. then the new stuff is uh, digital, like those glasses that connect to the TV. It's, right. it's it's like sending multiple signals, like every millisecond it's sending a signal to have it change what images you see to make it much more right. clear of a 3D picture. I did and by the way, I think that's what the Avatar movie first did. Because I, I don't remember them being like the blue and red. Like it was totally, yeah. you really feel like you were in that movie. It, it used light shifts. Okay. The, the, yeah. Like the, the way 3D uh, works in those IMAX theaters. That's why, like, uh, if you look through one, one's actually more tinted than the others, but it's the way they let light through Okay. Uh, um, your, to your eyes. So I heard about them trying to make the TVs that didn't need the glasses, but I know that th this is like years when 3D TVs just started coming out and getting popular. Um, I want to say it was like Samsung or LG was making the – TV, uh, the trying to make the one without glasses. And their biggest problem with it was because it has to focus in on different eyes, sending different signals to different eyes. You had, to, you had like one point of view that you could stand and have this 3d image that you were seeing. Right. But if you shifted off of it at all, it was, the signal was going to a different reference point. And yeah. that was a big problem with it. I don't know how much they've come up with technology from then, but considering that I haven't, seen any headway in the non 3d glasses 3d tv space nor heard about it anymore i wonder if they just failed miserably or like well screw this it's not worth it because as mike said it's not a technology people nice. really cared about that much because it would probably degrade the quality of what you're yeah. watching when you're watching it in 3d like if i could watch football in 3d that'd be freaking awesome but the picture's so crystal clear now with my HD package and everything. It's just amazing as well. If you degrade well, that quality at all, like when I have to go back and watch football in a non-HD TV, or like I was at my parents' house this last weekend, and they don't even have a widescreen TV at our house, so we don't have any right. HD packages, non-widescreen, and I was like, this looks like crap. Like it was so <laughs> hard to watch. Uh, so for uh, quality-wise, to have a 3D through the um... – TV, you just have to send twice that amount of information. That's why quality usually goes down. We're in 3D. 
Because basically you're sending two images at the same time. Uh, no, I mean, I get your concept, but do you is the 3D technology good enough that even if you sent double the data that you actually were seeing, uh, do your, your eyes putting things together in the right way that gave it that high quality or not? I, my guess would be uh, no, but I could be completely wrong. I've never used a, one of the fancy I, new I would, TVs or 3D TVs. I, think, I would think that if you're sending the exact same high quality images, but just basically two at the same time at different angles. That's how you get your 3D image that you can maintain the quality. But because the companies, Comcast companies or whatever, has to send that information, that's why they just send half the information. What do you think about the new 4K monitors and TV is going to be coming out? I don't see the use yet. I, there's no, I, I there's nothing uses it. I agree, Mike. You're la- you're laughing a little bit. I'm curious what your thought is on the 4K. It's just it. You know, it's uh, well, it's exactly like the uh, 10A kind of thing was when it first sort of became this thing that everybody was talking about. Like it's going to take a long time for the networks, even the you know paid networks, to start broadcasting. Um, with that quality. So the fact that they have made these TVs, yes, is impressive, but you're going to pay, you know, a small fortune to buy them now when most networks are not going to be up to that quality for quite a while. And, you know, if you just kind of hang around for a while and wait for the networks to catch up, the TVs are going to be, at least half price. I mean, that's sort of the way technology goes, always. What do you think the quality... I, I mean, obviously, you can give a number estimate on how much better the quality is of something based on just you know straight-up numbers. But when 1080p and stuff first came out, I was like, come on, you can't really notice that much of a difference. Things already look so good. And then 1080p came out, and I'm like, wow, it's amazing. <laughs> like, And now well, I'm like, it's so amazing. 4K really can't be that much better. Do you think well, it's going to be that much of a wow factor again? Or like now, without having ever seen one, do you think it'll be that great? Or do you think it's going to be kind of like, meh? I would say that from VHS to DVD, that was a very big difference that you can noticeably tell. Right. From DVD to Blu-ray, ten, yeah, to Blu-ray, I think it was a lot less noticeable. Now we have some friends that was like, you could see the difference between the the way the flames looked and appeared, but I think it's the the difference is much more subtle. So from let's say 1080 to 4K, that's going to even be even more subtle. Like you wouldn't have to have some really good eyes to tell the difference. See, I never owned a Blu-ray player because I never personally saw the point in spending that much extra money. However, I will tell you, when I've watched Blu-ray movies with other people, of especially movies that I've seen already, I'm like, man, this is a much better picture than I remember this film yeah. being in. But it's you can tell the difference. Times. But it could also be the better TV than what you remember it's seeing it on. Well. No, because I have had both on the same TV. Um, and you you definitely can tell the difference on the Blu-ray player. Um, however, I, I think it is, you know, kind of marginal, like Jeff was saying. Now, when you're talking about a jump from 1080 to 4K, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, is basically four times the image quality... Yeah, it's um, way more of an increase than 720 to 1080 was. Right, for sure. So, you know, I don't know. It, it might be okay. I, it, you know, again. <laughs> it might be it, okay or 4K. Right. Well, I, you know, it depends on how long it takes the networks to catch up. Because, I mean, I don't know this for sure. But I know when 720 and 1080 started coming out, um, it took a long time when both of them, generally speaking, sort of came out at a similar time. But it took a long time for all the networks to catch up to the 1080. They all started going to 720, and then it took a long time for them to go to 1080. 
well, how long is it going to take all these people to go up to 4K, all the networks you watch, all the shows right. that you want to see? Um, so if you invest this kind of money, and again, like I was saying earlier, anytime a first-run technology comes out, it costs a small fortune. Um, whereas if you just kind of wait around until all the networks catch up to this sort of thing, well, there's a drastic price decrease that you're going to but I must sort of have it in. now. Yeah. I mean, you can iPhone say that. 6, I must have it now. Well, I mean, you can say that about almost every technology, anything dealing with technology. So, like, people are like, well, I'm sure glad I waited until now to purchase Windows 95. <laughs> Not that it's mainstream. Oh. Right. I mean, I just got Windows 95, and I really dig it. I just finished I mean, installing it off of those 30 floppy disks. I finally found this <laughs> 29 and was able to finish. All right, that's it for this week, everybody. Want to follow us on social media like the What Do We Know Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at WDWK Podcast. Email us at wdwkpodcast at gmail.com or find us at our home on the internet, wdwkpodcast.com. Whenever I answer the phone, I'm like, hello. What pissed you off? It's a great argument to have. I love my mom, but I think she's half crazy for doing that. How dare you? Do you oh. work with your girlfriend, Mark? Or your wife? Mark? I keep them separated. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I call people, they don't answer the phone, I'm like, f*** them. Wrong number, click. Well, he's not that smart, and sometimes he sounds like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Go. So therefore, you're an ass, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. I still need my time. Man, I'm such a half for sure. Only the-